Hello, everyone, and welcome to our presentation. Today, we're going to do a little session for you called Cross-Curricular PE, ELA and Math Activities for Elementary PE, but also can be adapted for middle school and high school PE. But before we get started, we're going to introduce ourselves. My name is Kelly Zerby. I've been teaching elementary PE at into the DeKalb School District for 21 years. I'm the PE coordinator there. I do a lot of things for our Illinois group. I'm the vice president of all the children, I say, and I'm the Northern District president. And my favorite thing to do is present all over the place with my team of presenters. We call the Illinois Fab Four, and you'll meet two of them today, and we're ready to roll. So Cindy's next. Hey guys, my name is Cindy Cortinas Foat. Uh, this is my 22nd year of teaching. I've had experience teaching at multiple levels, including a little bit at the higher ed level. Currently, I'm an elementary teacher, kindergarten through sixth grade in the U46 Elgin School District. Just a little tidbit of information. It is the second largest school district, only second to Chicago Public Schools. I am a part of the district curriculum committee. Um, and I'm also a national presenter, as Kelly had said. I'm a member of Illinois Fab Four, and it's one of the things that I look forward to the most. Um, I enjoy attending some Cubs games at the Friendly Confines, and I'm a sucker for a good Netflix series. Currently, I am watching The Last Kingdom. All right, Bo's next. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Bo Phillips. I am currently wrapping up my 17th year at the elementary level. I teach in Elk Grove Village, Illinois. Uh, I am the past VP of all the children for IAFERG with our friend Kelly Zerby. Um, I'm also a national presenter. Um, I love going to different workshops and conferences in different states. Uh, I'm a member of this fantastic group called the Illinois Fab Four with Kelly and Cindy here and Mike Graham as well. And I love a good dance party. Well, today, friends, we're going to talk you through a number of games. We have um, 11 games to show you today, and these are all going to be linked on our slideshow on our website. And um, it's lots of fun stuff. So we have some images to show you, a video or two, and we're just going to try to talk through it as eloquently as we can and to make sure you understand the details of the game. But we are going to be in the unhangout afterwards as well. So if you want to, or during, I should say, and then afterwards we can chat again, all our information will be there. So without further ado, I'm going to present my first game, which is called the Math Derby. I really wanted to call it Zerby Derby, but, you know, I didn't want to get into all that, you know, stuff with the law. So the Math Derby is a really simple game. You can play it as an instant activity or um, you could play it for a, a while. My students like to do it either way. This version is set up for multiplication because you can see the cards on the right that say seven times eight and then gallop and five times five and skip. So that's your pre-work. You have to make the cards that have those terms on them. And you can make those real simply by hand on an index card, or you can you know, buy those cards at the dollar store and just write an locomotor on the other side. Um, so this is the way I like to play it with my older students with multiplication. So the setup then, if you look at the bottom picture, you need to make an oval of cones like a racetrack and then inside that area, you're gonna put a hula hoop and a marker board and a marker inside of it and partners share a hula hoop. So they have a team. So then what we would do, if Bo and I were partners, Bo and I would go to a bucket, we would choose a card. Our card would say gallop. So Bo and I would gallop a lap all the way around to the bucket that we started at, all around the perimeter and you would make that as large as you wanted. And then we would go to our home hoop in the middle and do the math. We would put the um, card down. And if I held the card, I'd let Bo do the math first, just to be fair, you know, take turns and share. And um, then we do the math and we write down seven times eight and we try to do the math together. And we're gonna be nice to each other to do that math. Once we're done, we leave the math problem on the whiteboard and we leave the card in the hoop and then we go and we do something else. We do it again. We pick another card and let's say this time we got the five times five and skip. We skip the perimeter all the way around and then we go do the math. And the reason we leave the questions in the middle is so that the teacher can walk around and double check the math and make sure they're getting more than one problem done at a time, you know, see how many problems they go through. You can set, you can set it like a limit and say, hey, when she gets to six, you're in the next level and things like that. 
<clears throat> now the adaptation for this game is that you can make it addition or subtraction for the younger kids, but I suggest that you put a picture of the locomotor on the back of the card instead of the word gallop if you're going to do it with as young as kindergarten and first grade, since they're not quite readers right away at the beginning of the school year. So um, my students come into this game and they're real hesitant at first because they're like, oh, math. But then at the same time, they like to do the locomotors together around the perimeter. So it's really fun and it could be an instant activity for you. I'm going to turn it over to Cindy for her game. Hey guys, so this game's called Alphabet Scramble. I want to try and find a game where I can incorporate some spelling and some PE skills. So for this game, I have um, one, actually in my gym, I have two sets of alphabet poly spots spread out throughout the gym. Students are put together into pairs and I let them choose their, their partners. Each pair has a home base, which I try to do on the perimeter of the gym. A home base has a whiteboard, two buckets, and a variety of manipulative items that they want to use for tossing. Underneath each poly spot, I have a word written out and it's put underneath. For example, if they were standing on a letter A, the word that they would probably find underneath there would be the word aerobic. So students decide what letter they want to go to. And that's when having two poly spot sets comes in handy because then you're spreading your students out a little bit more. So the students would then take um, their two buckets choose one of the manipulative items that they want to use and they're going to be doing some tossing and catching using the buckets. So one student would stand on the letter A if that's where they're starting at. Let's say that that is it and they're trying to spell the word aerobic. I have them look at the word, put it back underneath and then start spelling the word. So if Kelly and I were partners and I was starting out, I would stand on the letter A and Kelly would either go somewhere in between A and E or just go straight to E. It depends on how far apart the spots are. With my bucket and the manipulative item, I would try to toss that item to Kelly using the bucket. So I'm not using my hands to do an underhand toss or throw. I'm putting my hands on the bucket and I'm trying to toss it to my partner. So in the beginning, students really try to go from letter to letter until they realize it's a little hard and difficult to get it all the way across. So then they kind of adjust and try and go somewhere halfway in between. So as I toss it to Kelly and Kelly successfully catches it on the next letter, she stays on that letter and I move to the next. That way we're changing the roles of tossing and catching. We zip through our word until we get to the last letter. Once we're done catching at the last letter, we look up underneath that poly spot to see what our next word is. So if the word was aerobic, we would end on the letter C and we would lift that C up to see what the word is. So the word is going to be something that starts with that letter. So let's say it's cardiovascular. So before we move on to spelling cardiovascular, we go back to our home base, we write that word out so we know what words we've done. Then we go back to C and decide who's starting. Somebody stands on C, and the next person's either gonna go to the letter A or they're gonna go somewhere in between. So you're trying to do this and have them work their way through the alphabet. What we've noticed when we've played this and especially when we've presented, it's good to have more than one word underneath each letter so that if someone finishes or needs to start there, there is another word there. Because for example, some of the students have a hard time remembering how to spell. So if they leave the word underneath the letter, then they end up forgetting how to spell it. So it's good to either have multiple copies of the same word or have um, different words underneath each letter. That, my friends, is how you play alphabet scramble. Um, one of the things that you need to keep in mind when you're doing that, though, is give them choices of items to throw. You can do it by levels and starting with something that we think is easy and then move on. After a certain number of words, they can then choose another item to use to throw or we choose for them but you make that choice and give them a couple different things that they can select from. Okay, next we have Bo, who's gonna talk a little bit about his game. All right, thanks, Cindy. Uh, this game is called, I Like to Move It, Move It Math. And um, what can I say? I love the movie Madagascar and those crazy lemurs singing and dancing. Remember I told you I like a good dance party. Um, so when I was thinking about a cross-curricular game, um, that song is was in my head and I said, all right, I've gotta come up with a game with this title. and I like to move it, move it math is where I'm at. So the purpose of this game is for students to improve their uh, math composing or decomposing skills while getting their heart rates up, um, working together in small groups. 
Um, and each student uh, at some point will have the opportunity to be uh, a leader and have some extra responsibilities. Um, to be successful in this game, groups need to communicate, uh, work with one another, um, <clears throat> and of course be patient and be good listeners. So the setup, as you can see on the screen, is you set up six uh, cones around the perimeter of the outside of your playing area. Um, each cone will have a folder in it with an exercise written inside there. So a individual exercise has been assigned to each cone. Um, scattered around the area are different alphabet spots that I use. This is uh, used um, to help teams uh, find their, their starting location. So you'll have a whiteboard, uh, you'll have a timer, you'll have a marker. And then when you're ready, you assign a small group a letter and that's where they start. In the center of your gym or playing area will be a bunch of different cards face down. Each of them has a different number written on them along with a sticker. Um, each group should number off one, two, three, or four, however many you have. And this is so you can um, go in order of taking turns being the leader of your group. Um, on the word go, you will start. Um, for this example, we'll be using addition. So, oh, I'm sorry. So during the game um, for addition, uh, the leader's gonna run out and pick out a card from the, from the stack in the center. They're gonna run back to the group and they're gonna share that number with their group. So let's say the number is 12. Now everybody in their group knows that they're trying to compose um, different combinations of numbers to make the sum be 12. But the first thing they have to do is they have to all run one lap around the outside together. Now, while they're running that lap, they can start to think about those different combinations, six plus six, plus six three plus nine, seven plus five. They can share them together or they can keep them to themselves. When they do get back to their spot, it's now time to turn the timer over, which is a 30 second timer, and they are gonna to start to share those different combinations to their group leader. It's the group leader job to write those combinations down on the whiteboard. So they have 30 seconds to come up with as many different sums uh, combinations to equal that sum on their card. When their time is done, that leader is going to look at the card again and see what color sticker is on there. It could be red, yellow, green, purple, blue, or orange. Let's say it's red. The leader is going to run over to the red corner and they're going to look at what exercise is at that corner. Let's say red is jumping jacks. Uh, they will then roll the two foam dice that are there and let's say they roll two fives. Now they have 10 jumping jacks to do. They have to report that back to their group they're gonna lead that group now and say, all right, everybody, 10 jumping jacks. They're gonna do them together. When they're finished, it's now time for the next person in the group to be the leader. And you just go through the whole process again. So it's a good activity for students to have uh, the job of working together, but also leading the group, listening to their group mates, being patient with one another. And of course, we're getting our heart rates up and we're working on some math composing skills. So that is, I like to move it, move it math. And we'll now go back to Kelly for another game. Well, hi, did you miss me? I am back. Um, I have kind of a triple for you right here. This is a, called the Tri-Gold Trifecta. There's actually three games, actually a fourth. Um, and they're all inclusive of the same setup, which is really nice. And I really like that because when you get a piece of equipment sometimes, like for example, this tri -goal, you only have like one set idea about what to do with it. And it's nice to adapt something around an interesting piece of equipment. So. For this game, you need a goal in the middle. Like I put the tri goal in the middle. That's from Payless Sports. It, it it has three sides to it. It's colored. It's really nice. You could flip it upside down. Um, but I have played this game without the tri goal. I have round goal nets, or I use buckets on the ground, or you could you know put real goals in the middle, depending on the skill you want to work on. So if you look at this setup here, you have the goal in the middle. Then all of those orange and blue spots are numbered poly spots. And I have numbered poly spots one through 30 and they are scattered all around, no order in any way. So it's kind of just the kids have to find the right number. And then around the perimeter of your gym spread out are the team hoops, much like my last game, um, <clears throat> where you have a hula hoop and inside it, you have the marker boards, the, the game sheets, which you'll see in a second. Um, markers, erasers if you want them, and then whatever you're going to use as your piece of equipment. Now before I show you the three games, I want to preface that when I do um, cross-curricular games, I like to make sure that 
I'm, I'm making them a part of the unit I'm working on. I'm not just throwing out this game in the middle of nowhere that's focusing on kicking and we're not kicking. So you could make the manipulative whatever you want the kids to work on and or you can have them earn up to learn to earn different pieces of equipment silly pieces of equipment if you will like if they if they make you know five five goals with the regular ball then you give them a chicken to try to score with so it depends on what you want to do but i want to make sure that when you do plan your cross curricular games like it's really nice to make them a part of your unit if they're sports specific like this so i'm going to show you the write-ups now bo is going to switch the slide and I have three games on this sheet, so don't get too cross-eyed when you look at it, but picture the last slide, and we have, you know, everybody around the outside. The first one I'm gonna talk about is in the middle called Do the Math. So if you look at the two whiteboards underneath, um, that's my beautiful writing, thank you very much. You can set this up however you wanna do it. You can have the kids work on six problems, you can have them go from 100 down, you could work on whatever you want. But what I have them do is one partner Let's, let's pretend that we're just gonna work on underhand toss. So one partner takes the ball, goes out to the number. In this instance, I have the number 10. The underhand toss into the goal. If they make it, they come back, they write down the 10. And then while they're writing that down, their partner goes to another number and does the math and underhand tosses in this instance at the three. And then they do the 10 plus three equals 13. I mean, you can do this however you want. There's no set way. Um, you could have them try to earn the 13 too if you wanted to. But then what you could do is after they do six problems, since I drew the six boxes there, you could have them go ahead and earn a different piece of equipment to throw with or kick with. Or you could do paddles, you could do volleyball, lots of different things. So that's one way to do the math. And then the other way, which I found is hard, um, unless it's like third or fourth grade, you start with the 100 and have them get to exactly, um, get to exactly to zero or the other way. So however you wanna practice your math with the kids, it's really easy, quick partner switcheroo game. So the other math game is called Gold 10 Big O. So that's the right game to the right. And what they're doing is kind of the same thing. They're going to that 10 and then the other person's going to the 15 and then they're adding them together. And their job is to fill 10 boxes on the bingo sheet. Cause this could be again, an instant activity or your entire activity, depending on how much time you have for PE. And we only made it 10 bingo because five would be quick. So you could, you could have them do all 25 too if you wanted. And that's with addition, obviously. If you, did sub, if you were gonna do uh, multiplication, I wanna preface and say not to put any larger numbers around the perimeter of that goal higher than 12 because 12 times 12 is pretty much the highest number they memorize. So if you have your 30 out there and you have 30 times 15, they could probably do it in the maybe the fifth grade but you want to watch out for that and the last one has the kids um going to switch to the alphabet which is kind of fun and it's called break the code and what you do is you make a code sheet ahead of time and we have some online and i've also made some like dorky ones for the kids like um i've had the fifth graders do the do a code that says Mrs. Zerby is the best and I love Chuck E. Cheese and then I make them read it out loud. So what they do is they go, for example, they go to the two and try to underhand toss in and when they come back they earn the two, which is the letter B. Now I put the cheat sheet for you on the bottom, but I wouldn't do that for the kids. What I would do is I would put the letter B on the other side of the two poly spot so that they were double um, kind of coded for the children. So the two is a B and A is one and C and you'd go through. And then some of them aren't, aren't able to pick that up right away and you know kind of go through. But then you have them working on their words. Like these are second grade frequency words that the kids work on all the time. So I made this for second grade and then they practice their skill and they practice their words. So it's three games in the same setup, which I think is pretty cool. We'll have the specific write-ups for each one on our website. But that's all I'm going to say about this, and I'm going to pass it on to Cindy. All right, so this game is called Top Secret. I do have to start out by saying it was a game that Kelly first presented, and she actually came across it by, I believe it was a second grade classroom teacher that she works with. It's either first or second grade. Something that um, this particular teacher was doing in her classroom through like a Google slide presentation, and I think it really intrigued her. And so she asked if she could take that and borrow it and make something PE out of it. So Kelly's presented this game um, at different conferences that we've attended. 
And I liked it so much because I do a lot with um, academic integration as part of my contract at the building I'm working at. So I asked if I could take uh, that PowerPoint presentation and create something out of it that would work with my students. So the neat thing is, is when you print out the slides and you'll see to the right, there are some examples of problems. If you put, um, I think it was two or four to a slide, it's a nice size so that you can use them as flashcards. So with my game, you're either going to be doing some addition or subtraction. And you're trying, I think in her building, they call it decomposing numbers. In my building, um, they, they call it number bonds. So it's kind of always interesting how you can go from one school to the next or different districts and everybody has their own language. So here, the way that I have played it is I um, have students working in pairs. I reach out to the classroom teacher to find out um, what would be a wise type of combination because I don't want to put two students that struggle with math together because I want them to have some sort of leadership role, but still kind of learning. So it's beneficial for both. So students work in pairs and they take turns grabbing a card from the teacher or the table. So I usually have a little desk or I either have a little desk set up by my stereo where I'm standing at, or I have a table set up in the middle of the gym. So they're gonna take turns and grab a card from either me, the classroom teacher or the table. They're gonna bring it back to their station. So I, each, each set of pairs has, um, their own little home base station and it's usually somewhere in the center of the gym. Their station consists of a whiteboard, a marker, and an eraser. So once they grab that card and they bring it back to their station, they're going to look at that card and they're going to try and solve the math. So you can see a couple different examples here, actually three to be exact. Um, that top right hand corner, it just has a four and a five. So they're going to look at that, they're going to write down four plus five equals and then they're going to solve it. In the middle one, it's got the dots, like similar to what you would see on a set of dominoes, right? Um, or dice. And so they're going to try and look at the dots, count the dots, and they know that they're going to add the two. So five plus three, and then they're going to put equals, and then they're going to write their answer down. The bottom is a little bit more of the decomposing or number bonds. So you're going to look at the top number, which is a four and you're gonna look at the two boxes underneath. One has a number in it and one is empty. So here they're doing a lot of scaffolding and they are decomposing. So we know that four is actually the sum. That's gonna be our answer. So it's a little bit more of critical thinking skills and that's why I like this version of it. So they're gonna look that they're being provided number two and they have to figure out um, what other number would go in that box if you add two to it. So we know obviously, I would hope that two plus two equals four, right? So they would write two down and they would write it out. So what they do once they have their sum, I have stations set up and I usually try and do it in sets of six, okay? So at each station, I have a cone. I have like a cone folder that's flipped over the cone and I have a whiteboard that's on top of a, um, like a cone topper. On that whiteboard, I'll have a range of numbers written out. On the cone folder, I have like a, an activity or an exercise that's written out. So I try to have it nice and big so the students know where to go. Once they've figured out their problem, they've written it out, they know what the sum is, they go find that number on one of the cones. So if the sum was um, nine, they're gonna go find the station where the number nine is in the range of numbers. They have to go together. One can't go ahead of the other. They leave their card down on their whiteboard and they go to that cone and figure out what it is that's being asked of them to do. So if it says um, shoulder taps for nine, like it does in the top example, um, then they would go and do nine shoulder taps because that is the sum of their problem, okay? Then they both come back to their whiteboard and the next person goes and gets a card. So I have it where they're collecting every three to five cards and then they trade those in and then they grab a new card. I like this because they leave their cards there and as teachers, we can kind of circulate the gym, make sure that they are writing down the problem, first of all, and that they're solving it correctly. So we know that if they're looking at the problem and the only problem they have written down is four plus five, and they're at the station where the number two is there, we know that they haven't solved the problem correctly. So we can go back and kind of double check their math with them and walk them through it. Um, it's also nice practice for them to be able to write those problems out. This game has been really successful in my building. I've had first grade teachers come in and do it. We've had second grade teachers come in and do it. 
And I've also had third grade teachers come in and do it with multiplication. So that's what I like about games. When you're able to take a game and really adapt it and make it work for a number of students, I feel like that is a win-win. So for first grade in our building, they're expected to know their addition and subtraction up to the number 10. In our building for second grade, they're expected to know their addition and subtraction up to number 20. And in um, third grade, they're starting to work on multiplication and they go through um, sets of nine. So what I did is I took Kelly's PowerPoint presentation and I made my own or added problems that would accommodate what the ex classroom expectation is. So I have a set for first grade that only includes problems that go up to 10. I have a set for second grade that has problems that only go up to 20. And then I have another separate set that works on multiplication. So when they're doing multiplication, they can do multiplication or division, especially if you're doing the decomposing number where the, the number on the top is one and then you've got an empty box so they can figure out or divided by two is, or they can go two times what equals four. So it just depends on how you have it figured out. What's nice too with this game is now that we're all in distance learning, I was able to take these slides and convert it and make it easily a game that they can do at home. I just ended up putting the type of exercise on the actual card. So in the top corner, the very first one where it has four and five, I have a picture of someone doing some shoulder taps and then I have the direction of what they're doing. So I had them go to different rooms, do the math, and then they knew what exercise they had to do. So that, that was kind of a neat way to be able to use, still use this game, and it was one that they were familiar with. They were just changing their environment. Um, down below, you can see them doing a couple different things. One's at a, one picture shows them at their station. Um, the other picture shows them writing it out. And so we were really big sticklers on making sure they're writing out the problem and that the sum was correct, because sometimes they wanna just write the problem out and just run to the station and their math might not be right. So we wanna make sure that we are reinforcing both the PE skill and the math skill. So that is top secret. Uh, next, we've got Bo who's gonna talk about his game. Okay, thank you, Cindy. Um, this next game is called Spellbinder. Um, I have always loved spelling, uh, even if I'm not very good at it, um, but I will never forget winning the spelling bee in fifth grade, spelling the word chimpanzee for the record two E's at the end. Um, Tim O'Rourke did not know that. Sorry, Tim, to throw you under the bus, but I did win that day. Um, so when creating this game, um, I wanted to use um, some spelling, um, but really wanted to incorporate um, a lot of different skills that my kids, uh, some struggle at and some really excel at, and throwing, catching, kicking, rolling. Um, and so after working on these skills in prior classes, uh, and where all students have shown um, that they're ready to move on and really focus on um, some more accuracy, I came up with this game. So um, the way it works is at the bottom of the screen in my little diagram here, you can see six hula hoops. So each team uh, is gonna start there. In your hula hoop, you're gonna have a spider ball, you're gonna have a weighted target, you're gonna have your game sheet, you're gonna have a whiteboard and a marker. Um, just outside that is a jumbo spot and that is basically your home base. Each group is gonna have a row of spots um, evenly spread out. And then along the sidelines, um, you're gonna have a bunch of different cones with um, some signs. Now, you could vary the distance for your spots for each row based on your age group. Um, I've done this as low as second grade, um, but third, fourth, and fifth grade really, really uh, excel in this. Um, <clears throat> so what we're trying to do is, first you have to decide um, are you going to assign words to the kids or are you going to let them choose their own? So what they're trying to do is spell different words using those skills and those spots. So if I'm on the red team and we are trying to spell the word heart, um, along the left side, you'll see uh, signs that have level one, two, three, four, five, and six. Each level has a bunch of different letters uh, assigned to it. So if we are trying to spell the word heart and we are on the red team, um, if I'm first, then I'm going to go out to level one and the next person in my group standing on our jumbo spot will give a throw. And if I catch it, we have successfully now obtained the letter H. So I will run back. I will write down the letter H on our whiteboard, hand the ball to the next person. The person that did throw it to me is now the next catcher. Now we need the letter E. So that is at level two. They now would go out to the green spot, level two, and try to make a catch from the next person throwing. If you are unsuccessful, you just rotate through your group. 
Um, you could certainly throw in some exercises um, when a person returns to the back of the line. Um, I usually assign an exercise when they have finished a word. Um, but what you have is <clears throat> uh, a, a whole level of letters that the students have to work together to um, find their words. Now, I have found that um, students, when they get to choose their own words, they really like that, but sometimes you'll find a lot of words that are just like uh, the and bat and hit. Um, so I do like to assign certain words um, that are a little longer. We sometimes assign point levels. So if the uh, word has six letters, then it's worth six points. Um, you could certainly give each group different word lists to check off. And then on a card on the backside, you could have an activity or a task that they have to uh, perform when they are finished. Um, I have used this game with a multiple uh, different uh, equipment as well as different skills. Uh, rolling a ball and knocking over a weighted target, um, throwing a ball and knocking over a target. I've done kicking. Uh, I've, in my soccer unit, sometimes we'll do kicking and trapping the ball. Now students do have to keep one foot on the jumbo spot or the other spot when they are catching or trapping. Um, and so it's really working on some more accuracy. And I, I, I walk around and I'm really um, evaluating them and giving them feedback. And then we also have peer feedback going on during this game too. So um, this game is called Spellbinder and I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, now on to Kelly. Hey guys, so actually I'm obviously not Kelly. We're gonna change the direction a little bit. And I am going to talk a little bit about my last game, which is called A to Z Bowling. So I'll wait for Bo to flip to that screen for me so I can talk a little bit about that game. Perfect, thanks Bo. All right, so like I said, this is called A to Z Bowling. Um, it's probably one of my favorite games. I like that we were as a team able to really come up with different versions of this game. I put together a little video that shows like the different levels, which makes it even that much more enjoyable. So the object of this game is to try and score points by rolling the ball at the pin or foam letters, which is what I have. Um, I was given these foam letters by our district liaison and um, she gave us each a set and said, hey, let's see if you guys can come up with some games with this. So I was like, all right, I'm game for the challenge. So had these, took pictures, sent them to my team. I'm like, what do you think? We've got to come up with a game. So started thinking, I'm like, why don't we use it as a bowling game? So what I've done is I take those alphabet letters and I spread them out along the perimeter of my gym. I put a hula hoop around it and I put a poly spot underneath the letter. Now I realize that not everyone is gonna have these foam letters, so that's all right. You can use a bowling pin if you have enough of those, or you can use a weighted target, which is I've also used, but really anything that you wanna use as a target would be fine. I also have, um, like I mentioned in my first game, Alphabet poly spots. Again, if you don't have an alphabet poly spot, that's okay. Use regular ones and then just write out some letters and stick it on your poly spot. So as the students come in, I have them um, come in and enter as a pair. And each pair is going to get a dry erase folder with a sheet inserted that kind of looks like this that first image that you see underneath it, the uh, video. And I'll tell him, all right, Kelly, Bo, you guys are going to go start at the letter D. If the class size is small, I try and separate it so that there is at least one letter in between each pair so there's no backup, okay? So for kindergarten through first grade, each duo needs an alphabet card, which is that sheet that I told you about. Um, they're gonna go to the letter that is assigned to them. And they are each going to get a turn to try and knock down a object, okay? So if it's the, if it's the foam letter, it's the letter, it's the bowling pin, or it's a weighted pin, whatever you're using as a target. You're going to take your turn and you're going to try and roll the ball and try and knock down that pin or object. If I'm first and I knock it down, then we move on to the next letter. So you're going to go in order. So if I started at A, I would then move to B. And my partner would then go first since she didn't get a turn the first time around. So we make our way through the alphabet. If you knock down the pin, you uh, check it off once you knock down your target. And then you try to make your way through the alphabet. I was able with second grade to get all the way through the alphabet, which is pretty neat. Um, for second and third, fourth and fifth grade, we wanted to make it a little bit more difficult for them. So we have a different way of playing it for them. So for them, we are using the Scrabble scoring system and you see the image down there and we also have that for them so that they can see it. I usually put it up on my um, projector so that they're able to see that. 
And here they're going to have some scoring guides here. So they get one point if, they, if the ball lands inside of the hula hoop. They'll get two points if you knock your letter down. Three points if you knock your letter down and the ball stays in the hoop. So we like doing this because you're giving a multiple um, opportunities to score some sort of point. Because otherwise, if they if you just use a target as a way of sc scoring a point and they don't knock that target down, then they don't get any points and they get discouraged if they make it through several letters without getting any points. This way, there's multiple opportunities for them to try and score some points. So for second through fifth grade, we give them words. So they'll come to uh, you know a desk or the teacher or wherever you want to place your words. Um, sometimes we use the round net goals and we flip them upside down and we, we lay some pre-selected words up there that are laminated. They grab the word and they try to spell that word out. So if the word was fantastic, they're going to go to the letter F. They have, to, they have to spell it in order. So they can't just pick all the different letters and try and spell it. They're going to go from beginning to end. So if the word is fantastic, they would start at the letter F and work their way through the word. For the older grades, like let's, I go up to sixth grade actually. So for fifth and sixth grade, we thought it would be neat for them to be able to create their own words. Um, you might even give them a, a list that they have to like create from. So maybe you're working on a unit and you want them to create words that have to do with your unit. Maybe it's words that they're working on in their classroom. I'm like, really, there's not, there's not any um, certain way to do it. You can choose how you want to do that. And they'll use the Scrabble letters for their point system for fifth and sixth grade when they're creating their own words. So let's say they, they want to write the word basketball. So they're going to do the same PE skill, but they're going to use the Scrabble letters as their point. So they know that they've got B. If they score it, they're going to get three points and they're going to mark that off as they create their word. This way they're trying to stay motivated and coming up with some long words that give them some great points or words that have letters like the letter J or the letter X or the letter Z that scores them multiple points uh, for that letter. So here's um, a game where you can take it and modify it in three different ways depending on your grade level and, and really the, the age and the ability of the student. Okay, so this is A to Z bowling and um, hope you enjoyed it. Kelly's gonna end here with her last game and then We'll talk to you a little bit about the website. Well, I guess we just don't like Kelly today. It's gonna to be me this time. So we love you, Kelly. Anyways, so this is a game that I um, had a lot of uh, trial and error with, a lot of fun creating, a lot of back and forth. Um, and the good thing that came out of it is that I have lots of versions of this game. So this game is called Memory Lane. I'm gonna to explain to you the version called Roll Down Memory Lane, because I do have multiple versions. Um, Recall and memory um, is a very important skill at any age. Um, and so when I was thinking about childhood games that I liked a lot, memory was one of them. So I am combining the game of memory with uh, different skills of rolling, throwing, kicking, catching again. So for this game of roll down memory lane, um, what you're gonna do is, as you look at my picture on the left, I have um, hula hoops all around the outside. And that is for each group of two or three students. Um, in the middle of the gym will be all of our hidden spots. Um, and underneath each hidden spot will be a playing card. Now I only use two of the suits. So I use one of the black suits and one of the red suits. You can choose whichever, it doesn't matter. Um, but each spot will have a uh, playing card underneath it, face down. Now your partner and you will be at your hoops. You will have either a target uh, or a ball, depending on what uh, version of memory lane we are doing. So today, since we're doing roll down memory lane, you will have a spider grip ball. Now, the purpose of this game is for you and your partner to form, find as many different pairs as you can. Now, in order to find a pair, what you and your partner have to do um, is you're gonna place your weighted target on one of the spots out there. So if my partner is at the hoop, I'm gonna run out and put a weighted target on one of the spots. So let's say I put it on a yellow spot with a blue center. I'm gonna go back to my hoop and I'm gonna roll the ball and try to knock it over. If I'm successful in knocking over my target on my spot that I designated, I get to peek underneath there and see what card is underneath there. I take that information and I share it with my partner. So let's say it was the six of hearts. My partner's then gonna go put the target somewhere else and we're gonna keep doing that. Every time we knock over the target, we get to look under there and gain some new information about the location of a card. 
if we think we know where a black six is and a red six is, we are going to let Mr. Phillips or whoever your teacher is know. I have a master key a map of all the card locations. If they find a pair, then they are going to go back to their sheet. And as you see on my sheet here, we have the list of all the cards, ace through two. They're going to cross off that they found the sixes. And then <clears throat> they move on. If they find a joker or they are incorrect at guessing the location of a pair, then in the corner of each of the, of the four corners of the gym, I have some jumbo playing cards. They have to pick a jumbo card. Now let's say they pick a 10 of hearts. On the far right, I have there the four exercises associated with that card and that suit they would have to do 10 squats and then they can continue. So they are constantly moving around either, well, for this one, they are rolling the ball and trying to knock over the target. Every time they gain new information, they wanna store that information in their heads. They can write it down. They have to gather it together. Now, if they're uh, incorrect, like I said, we're gonna put them to a corner and do an exercise. I've uh, had the fun part of playing this with my fourth and fifth graders and we did it with throwing and catching, rolling, uh, kicking and trapping the ball on the spot. And we had one where they just had to do different locomotor movements, running around, skipping, galloping, sliding, and then they get to peek underneath the spots. But again, it's a lot of recall and a lot of memory, but it's a lot of teamwork, a lot of communication. Um, and it's called memory lane. And this version was roll down memory lane. So I'm gonna hand it over to Kelly now. Hi hey friends, I am still here. I didn't leave or anything like that. Um, so we're winding down. We have less than four minutes left and we wanted to make sure to show you where you can find all these resources. So our last slide here has our email address and our Twitter handles. And then when you click on that link, it opens up our website. And we wanted you to see where everything was because um, historically we've had about four different themes of presentations as we have been a group. Um, and a number of different people in our group as well. But if you look at the top there, you see the tabs that say home, cross-curricular, let's play, fitness fun, muscles and bones. Those are the four categories we have games created for. So Bo is gonna click on cross-curricular activities and then that's gonna take you into our big folder where everything you can imagine is in here. So first you're gonna see some specific slideshows to places we've presented and I put those in temporarily, but all the games are linked under and right there. So when you click on any of those, the PDF should open and then you have all the games. We have a plethora of activities in each of these categories and um, a lot of the resources that go along with it. And if there is something that is confusing to you or you open it up and you're like, I don't understand, um, then we can explain it to you. We're happy to help on that website and everything like that. So um, we have lots of games in cross-curricular, lots of games in Let's Play and we have a lot in muscles and bones as well. So um, if ever you have questions, you can let us know. Um, I didn't um, produce my last game for you guys, which is called Cardio Spelling, but that's a pretty um, dry cut game to just kind of understand. It's like the game of telephone and you move forward with exercises and, and going up. But the, the write-up is in there and you'll be able to find it right there. And then, um, that one's a good warm up with fitness activities and such. But um, wanted to make sure you, you were able to get to that website. So Bo, can you go back to our presentation and go to that last slide again, please, before we say farewell. So that's our information. Um, we've had a great time telling you what we know. And um, we, we would just wanna say thank you for being here and let us know if you have any questions. You guys wanna say goodbye? Yeah. Thanks guys, it was really awesome to be part of this type of presentation and I really hope you enjoyed some of our games. Make sure um, you join us in the Unhangout if you have specific questions on some of the games. I'll leave it to Bo. Yep, uh, thank you very much. It was uh, very uh, new, but uh, very exciting to do a presentation like this and uh, our information is there. So if you guys have any questions, please reach out. We'd be happy to answer them. All right, thank you everybody. Bye. See ya. Bye. Bye.